Welcome to Eclipse.net, your portal to your school library resources and content. This video guide will show you how to navigate your way through Eclipse.net and introduce you to some of the helpful and varied functions available. Using Eclipse.net can help you in many ways, including with the selection of great books and resources, tackling coursework needs, and in becoming a confident, skilled researcher and independent learner. It's also fun to use too. Whenever you launch Eclipse.net, you'll be taken to this home page, which gives you an instant summary of what's happening in your library. To take maximum advantage of all the features available, such as sending in reviews, making reservations, putting items in your My Stuff area, and using the Who Next recommended reads generator based on your borrower history, you will need to log into your account, as I have done with my username and password. You will also need to do this to access your account to see which books you have on loan or need to renew. Ask your librarian if you are unsure of your login details. Please note that to search the catalogue, you don't need to be logged in. Beneath your account information is the author's corner, an area which contains video clips from popular fiction authors talking about their books. You can also learn more about the book in question as there is a summary of the book displayed and you can see how many copies your library has and how many are out on loan. Let's watch the video clip. A Hat from the Sky is the second book, I hope to write a total of four books, about Tiffany Aching, a young girl on the disc world who is learning to be a witch. And she has to learn a lot of things and she has to unlearn a lot of things and she has to learn to control the powers that she so obviously has. Um, and unfortunately, if you become very good at magic, you attract the attention of other things. Strange. Stuck for what to read next? If you click on the Who Next button, Eclipse.net will generate a list of titles which are in your school library which have been recommended based upon your borrowing history. You need to have borrowed at least five titles for these recommendations to be generated. You can also use WhoNext when you are not logged in when searching for a favourite author to discover who else is recommended who writes in a similar way, such as for Kevin Brooks. Clicking on the Who Next icon of any book record within these results will let you see even more recommended reads. You don't need to be logged in for this sort of Who Next search to work as Eclipse.net does not need to know who you are. You may wish to reserve a book which is very easy to do especially if you're accessing Eclipse.net from home or on your smartphone or tablet using our IMLS app. Simply click the reserve icon and this makes a reservation for you. Reviewing a book or resource is also straightforward. Select the review icon again from within the book record and the review screen will open. As you can see you have options to change the font type and colour, add smiley faces and give the book a star rating. When you have written your review Select Save, and this will send it to your librarian for authorisation. Once approved, your review will feature in the latest reviews carousel at the bottom of the screen. You can also send in reviews using our IMLS app, including video reviews. My Stuff is your own area for putting book titles or resources you may have found when searching Eclipse.net away for later. You can add as many items as you like to My Stuff and can always go back to access it at any time whilst you are logged on. If you need to, you can print off your list of My Stuff contents such as for your homework. You can also reserve or review the books you have noted in your My Stuff area. My Stuff will empty when you log off but any reviews or reservations will be retained. As we begin to search the library catalogue, I will be adding resources to the My Stuff area to show you how it works. Also on the Eclipse.net homepage, within the central panel, is the cloud. 
This shows you what other students have been searching for as it displays all the search terms used. If you are curious, you can click on any of the words in the cloud to bring up the results for that search. You can also see the top 10 most borrowed books in your school library. Choose one you want to know more about. And add it to the My Stuff area. New arrivals to the library keeps you informed as to which are the latest new titles available to borrow. Channels are interesting information feeds selected by your school librarian and teachers. So don't forget, keep checking the Student Channels tab to see what's there for you. Over to the top right of the screen, you can see what has recently been returned to the library. Beneath the returned trolley, we have the Book of the Week. which I'm going to add to my stuff. You can also read all the latest library news in the news area. When it comes to searching the library catalogue, there are a variety of ways to do so. To start with, you can use the quick search box at the top right of the screen, as we did earlier for Kevin Brooks. Type the keyword in the box that you'd like to search for. I'm going to search for books by Charlie Higson. As you can see, you can adjust the filter so that you can search just by title, author or keywords amongst other options if you wish. Then click on the binoculars to run the search. When the results are loaded up, if you hover over different titles, further information will be displayed at the bottom of the screen, such as a summary of the book, author video clips, and you can write reviews or reserve the selected title. The book will also show its location on the shelves when you click on Floor Plan. You may need to check this with your school librarian, as it will only work if your library has all the books linked to an interactive floor plan. The clipboard icon will display any notes that may have been written about the book, such as by a teacher for an assignment or by the librarian about a reading group book choice, such as in this case. Linked items shows any books or other resources such as websites linked to the one you have just selected. What have other people read will show you other resources students who read the book you are looking at have also borrowed and this may help you to decide what you'd like to read next. Let's try another search, this time for Shakespeare resources. On the left of the screen there is a filter that enables you to see which type of resources have come up as a result of your search. You may find that in addition to books there are websites, films or other content available. You can then filter results if necessary. This can be useful for online research as Eclipse.net will also direct you to popular websites related to your search term. So whatever the topic, try searching Eclipse.net to see which resources are recommended for you. There are also tools to sort, export and print your results. You can search Eclipse.net in other ways too, 
by selecting the search tab or icon from the home page. This will open up lots of search options including views which your librarian has prepared specifically for your search needs such as for coursework, for example poetry. There are also picture searches by subject, an A to Z search by author, title, series and genre. So to look for books by Roald Dahl, I have clicked on D in the author A to Z and found Roald Dahl in the list of author surnames arranged alphabetically. And a more advanced search tool which uses Boolean logic for more complex queries, such as, for example, a search for resources about hurricanes and tornadoes. If your school is part of the Accelerated Reader programme, you will recognise the Accelerated Reader logo in the top left hand corner of any books that have a quiz. Hovering your mouse over the logo will show you the quiz number, book level, points and interest level associated with the book. If your school uses ClickView videos, these will also be included, if available, in any search results. Let's quickly go back to the My Stuff area. As you can see, it contains all the books I have collected during my searches, which I may want to go back to and find out more about. Please note that many of the features you have seen can be accessed via the free IMLS app, should you wish to access Eclipse.net whilst you're not in school, such as if you happen to be in a bookshop wondering if your school library has a particular title, you can load IMLS on your phone and scan the ISBN number from the back of the book. Our app will tell you if your library has that book in stock or not. You can find out more about the app and how to download it on our website at www.microlib.co.uk. We will finish by looking at the Personal Preferences tab. When you are logged on, you can personalise your Eclipse.net experience, such as by changing the theme and background, and even the language. And you can always change them back again. If you'd like to know more about using Eclipse.net as well as asking your school librarian at any time, you can select the light bulb on the home page. This will load the Eclipse Quick Start Guide. We've now come to the end of this guide to your Eclipse.net library system. We hope you have enjoyed watching this video and that you now know a lot more about how to make the maximum use of Eclipse.net.